there and welcome. This is Liz from Liz at Home and I've got my table mountain here from Cape Town in South Africa, which is where I'm from. And I'd like to welcome you to my channel and say thanks for joining me today. Today is the video that many people enjoy watching. I know I love watching other people's completed pages and I'm going to share with you today my completed pages plus my completed paintings, plus I've started doing some glue booking. So I'm going to show you my two or three collages that I did. So they'll be done in sections and I'll tell you when each section is finished. So if you're not interested in the next section, then you can just switch off. I'd like to say before I begin, thank you so much to everybody that has commented on my videos and has clicked that like button. I really would appreciate it so much if you could click the like if you've enjoyed the video um, because it really does help my channel and it helps other people to get the video recommended to them. So without further ado, I'm going to start with my colouring pages. The first one I did was from, I just want to check I'm um, in screen. There we are, it's quite a large book. So this is from Little Woods by Leslie Smitheringale. Um, and I did a channel colour along in this at the beginning of October. So as you can see, it's got quite a lot of um, shiny bits and pieces in it. I hope you can see the shine and the sparkle. Uh, so I used ink tents and I used some um, glaze on the eyes and I used some stickles glitter in the stars and also um, a metallic gel pen in some of the places. Or maybe it was a sparkle pop, I can't remember. I didn't write everything down this month. The weather is heating up here. You can, I hope you can see the shine. Did some little stickles on the wings as well. I really enjoyed coloring that and this is a lovely book. So I printed it on really good paper too. I don't know what the paper is like when you buy the book. Then next in Matchstick Mouse, an autumn coloring book. I did this, and this was a buddy colour with Be Cozy. I didn't write that down either. And I will put Bee's beautiful image here. I think she's done an absolutely fabulous job on hers, and I love the pink owl. There was a pink owl hashtag by Samways Colouring, and I had an owls in October hashtag. And if you've entered that, then you will, I'll put a video up that will be my next video showing all the owls that were in that hashtag. I used some golden watercolour paint and some metallic watercolour paint on Mr. Mouse's hat as well and on some of the leaves. I don't know if you can see the shine there. Yes, I think it's actually showing. So that is that one. Then I did another buddy colour and this is from Coco Wire's Spooky Girl and I did this with the lovely Megan from Disney, Disney Makes Colouring and I really enjoyed colouring her. I printed this on some Canson Crocus C-R-O-Q-U-I-S paper and it's a sort of a light cream colour. I have the PDF book that I bought from Coco Wire's Etsy shop. I'm so grateful that they have it. It was, a, um, I think, a side effect that happened when Amazon had their problem with them. So I'm going to put Megan's picture here for you to enjoy. And I love her so much. I really like that sort of dark blue book and that she wrote on the book. 
And I want to thank Megan for another lovely body color. It was so much fun. So I enjoyed coloring this. Again, I've got some metallics you can see. I didn't write down everything. I was on a bit of a roll of using my metallic watercolor paints because they were out. So it's probably that that I used. Then I had some fun in this such and such diva all time hits color by number book. And I did this one for Halloween. I can't remember if it was for a hashtag as I started coloring it. Um, I think I was just enjoying myself. I used acrylic paint pens for this one for a change. I think it was the Artex ones because they you can see the numbers through them. And in some of the places, I went over the number with a second coat or some plain acrylic paint just to try and hide the numbers. So I like how that turned out. And then I did this one, which was fun. I don't have many of these sort of cross-stitch mystery books. And I must say, I started on this side and I didn't have a clue what this was going to turn out to be. I mean, his hair or whatever's behind him is a bit off centre. I don't know if I got a number wrong. don't think so. But, no, these are all 14s. So, because to me, this could have sort of balanced out with that a bit better. But anyway, it was a fun page to do. This book, I'm really pleased I bought. I don't have much of such and such Diva's books, and I really like his work. For me, buying from Amazon used to be an option, but these days, the our rand has devalued so badly, and the postage, I mean, there was a book on special the other day, and I looked at it, it was marked down to five ninety five, and it would have cost me $25 to get it here. So nothing is under $30, usually $35.40, like per book. So my buying and my things are very sparse these days. Then from this Whimsical World by Molly Harrison, I did. Oh, this is such a pretty book. I love Molly Harrison's stuff. And it was actually the first image I've colored in here. So this was a pink owl, and I think I did this live, or not live, I think I did part of this as a video. I did my pink owl as the pink owl hashtag for Samway's coloring, and then I used watercolor paint pen, no, watercolor, metallic watercolors, sorry. I'm having a bad day today on the moon. And I used some holographic paint, which is clear, a sparkle paint and um, acrylic one on the wings on top of the coloring of them. So I actually love how that came out. And then I used, um, as you can see, it's all quite crinkly, this page, but I love the crinkly. <laughs> I really love the crinkly paper. I know many people don't like it at all, and I could iron this, but a bit scared with the metallics. And it actually pleases me when they're like this. It's something about it pleases me. I used... Oh, I'm just going to run and fetch. First layer was Ranger Distress inks, which I then sprayed just with my little bottle of water. And then I wanted something more, so I used these brusho crystals, which I sprinkled and sprayed again. I don't want to get them on here. They're very messy things. So I don't know if you've ever seen anybody using them before. They're very, very fine. It's almost like a powder and you put them on something. I'll show you here quickly. Quick aside, because I don't use them very often. So take a little bit on your finger, sprinkle them. Whoops, that's not enough. So I'm just putting a little bit down. You can hardly see that. 
Now I really need to make sure I clean my hand because they make a mess. And then you spray it with water. And they activate and they, they, they go all over the show. I'll see if I can find a link for these so as you can see them. And they're very cool, but they go everywhere. You have to use water for them. And bad news, they actually bleed through. So they're great on something that it doesn't matter. But even the distress inks bleed through when you activate them with water. Oh, I know what this was. This was my painting with Crayola and gel pens. Oh, no, it wasn't. This one I did with using liquid paraffin as a blending medium for pencils. And I don't know if you watched that video and there was this ring around the page from the paraffin. You can still sort of see the ring there. But interestingly enough, it did not um, work as as a resist against the watercolor paint. So I thought that was interesting. I love how this turned out so smooth. So, okay, that was that page. Enough about that. I digress. This page was with my Crayola painting with Crayola super tips. And I also like how this turned out. And then I added a bit of gel pen. This was such a fun page to do and so easy. And painting with the Crayola Super Tips makes, makes them bleed to the other side. Just a warning. And I, silly me, did not put a piece of cardboard. And this whole thing, even this next page, is wrinkly from the water. So um, do take care. Doesn't really bother me because I'll just paint over what's on the page behind. I see I didn't wait for it to dry either, so it's even gone onto that page. Oh, Elizabeth, you are a mucky plug. But anyway, such is life. So that's that one. And I started all of these to follow somebody, I think it was Megan or Amanda's How Many Pumpkins, and I got lost and I never actually posted. And this I did also as a body colour with Megan and I have an idea that when I did this I was following Amanda's AC Palette challenge and then I couldn't remember if I'd done it and I hadn't written it down and so it also just went by the wayside and I apologize for that. I used a hoo hoo markers and just a little bit of white um, to and other gel pen to highlight and some metallic marker for the raindrops. So here's Megan's picture. And this is from the Sherry Baldy Fabulous Fall book again where I have the digital edition and I printed this on its color, pho color photo paper. And it's actually really nice to work on with markers because it's not shiny but it has a, a kind of a coating which makes it nice for the markers. They do still bleed through. Then I posted on a free gift um, about this Halloween word search printables with these colouring images and I coloured mine in. Just used pencils and I started with some water-based markers and then I covered with pencil and then I got sick of that, so <laughs> I just used pencil. And I had a lot of fun doing that. And if you haven't seen it, I'll put a, a link up here, although Halloween is over. I get a license for some coloring pages and then I made the word search myself. So if you like this kind of thing, do let me know and I can do it with some other themes, if you like that, if that's a cool gift for you. Then this page from Camellia Angelkova's 50 Autumn Miniatures. I did this, and this was also for a hashtag 
which I never posted, and it was something about cauldrons. I want to see if it's still active for November. I'm not sure. It was probably Halloween. You can see the interesting texture. I first treated this page with it is golden satin glazing liquid, which is a bit like watercolor ground. They and that allows you, you, you can see the back's completely clear. And I used water brush pens on here and here, but it creates a slightly strange texture so that the different colors of the watercolor pen sort of separated on it. I did this as a video and then I haven't edited or posted the video and I'm still deciding whether I will or not. So. I'll see. If you're interested in seeing how the water, I used a budget brand of water brush pens on it and then I went over it with pencil and just some washi and enjoyed doing that. So I kind of like how it ended up. But again, I don't think I posted the hashtag. Do any guys, do any of you also find that a problem? I know when I watch everyone's videos, the rest of you all seem so much more organized than me. I find organizing things and diarizing and planning really difficult and then it bites me in the bum at the end because I don't know what's what and I haven't done it so I keep trying to get it right but yeah life gets life becomes life so I enjoyed this page so it was the water brush pens and then I just used Crayola pencils on top and I kind of, I mean, I on purpose didn't smooth that out. I kind of liked the texture. And I must say, colouring with a pencil on top of this glazing liquid eats away at your pencils. <laughs> because it's a little bit like sandpaper. And then my last colouring page was in another untouched book which is a fairly old Halloween special. It's issue 54. And if you consider they've just reached issue 100 or just passed, I reckon this is probably about two years ago. I didn't mark it. And it's the first picture I've colored in here. And I really enjoyed that. Again, I didn't treat the paper this time. I used water brush. This is by Vanessa Yotumoto. And I've never done one by her before. And I didn't treat the paper first. And I used a water brush pen as a base and then went over it with Crayola color pencils. And it was very rough with the Crayola. And I used once again the liquid paraffin to blend that. And it, it, that really worked well. But again, you can see it sort of bleeds through. But that could be the water brush pen. This paper, it's the old Colouring Heaven paper, so it's quite thick still. They used um, gel crayons for the background and then metallic and dual metallic gel pens for detailing. I had fun with that page. So that was that and that's the colouring. If you're not interested in the watercolour, I'd like to thank you for watching. But if you are interested in the watercolour, I'm going to carry on with what I painted. So firstly, I did this image. I had something in the background that I didn't like. And so then I just decided on an autumn trees one and I quite like how this turned out. I'll try and zoom in on it for you a little bit. There we are. So you can see the double page and that's watercolor, not gouache. And I quite like how that turned out. I'm going to zoom out. Then next, I did quite a few landscapes. They start here in my sketchbook. So the first one was these autumn trees. And I did that as a video on a watercolor Wednesday. Then I did another autumn tree, which I really enjoyed doing with sort of a birch, a beech um, tree kind of look. 
And then I did this landscape with the grasses and the lighthouse. This was a bit funny at the end of this little puddle. It was supposed to be a river and I messed up and so I closed it up. So <laughs> Then I did this one which I really like. And that's all in that book. Then I've got an Emma box and she showed pumpkins. So I just actually painted my own pumpkins. Um, with Some of them were with my own paint, some of them were with Emma paints. I didn't paint the pumpkin from her class. Did another autumn tree playing around with loose flowers and those I'm quite happy with actually. Another slightly misshapen pumpkin. And then I did a landscape from an Emma Lefebvre tutorial with her watercolour box. And I think that's my piece de resistance for my watercolour. I'm very pleased with how that came out. Although this poor tree is going to fall over in the next sharp wind, I think. So that comes to the end of my watercolour painting. And then I've recently discovered glue booking or collage. I long ago started this art journal, which has got many weird and wonderful things in it. But then I did these two collage pages, which I quite like. This is a one that I flipped in. So I'll zoom out a bit. And I did another page in here as well. So I also did this page, the Hello Sunshine page, which I like. And I did one other page in here. Oh yes, there's my other page. This is an old page. And this is the latest one I've done. So it says today is full of possibilities. Never give up. Life was meant for a great adventure. I feel like the background's perhaps a bit standing out too much. But anyway, this is a new journey. So that brings me to the end of my... I don't think I'm going to put those all out. Maybe I will. Brings me to the end of my <laughs> paintings for the month. And I'll pop that one up there as well. And I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching the video and for joining me on my art journey. And I hope that if you've enjoyed it, you'll like it and leave a comment. And see you in the next video. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye now.